Hello, everybody. We are Exemplary Vegetables. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth. I'm Rachel. <laughs> and here we are again for season two, episode three. Yeah. Get it. All right. And this episode, we are reading chapters 11 through 15 of Sense and Sensibility. And we're watching the 1995 movie with Emma Thompson and Hugh Grant and Kate Winslet from 54 minutes and six seconds to one hour, four minutes and 36 seconds. Are you ready, Rachel? I am. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Our first section is called Overall Impressions or A Defective Cottage. <laughs> did, you, did you call it defective or defunct? I think it's defective because okay. the cottage is defective. Okay. <laughs> So. <laughs> that replaces the very small garden from yes, the prejudice. Yes. <laughs> the Dashwoods settle into life in Devonshire. Marianne and Willoughby are all over each other. Brandon is moping over Marianne. He gets a letter and disappears. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly Willoughby says he's got a motor too. Margaret hints that Eleanor has a boyfriend back home and Mrs. Jennings is eager to find out who it is. Yep, absolutely. Everyone is so busy. And it's like lots of travel maps. If we could ever figure out how to make them. We were talking about that last <laughs> week. It's uh, I want to travel by map and have, you know, a bonnet go. Yeah. We got to figure out how to make a travel map. So let's get started on our recap. And we call this section a Mrs. Dashwood, a Miss Dashwood, a Miss Dashwood, and a Miss Dashwood. In chapter 11, the Dashwoods are amazed that life in Devonshire keeps them so busy. They are often invited out and entertain visitors. Willoughby hangs out a lot. He and Marianne are fairly lovey-dovey, and it's a little bit impolite, but they are too besotted to care. Mm -hmm. And it was a, just enough to get like a big sister lecture from Eleanor about propriety, but Marianne and Willoughby think that ours is the opinion that matters, and yeah. uh, they're just, anyone else is just going to be you're going to have to be a third wheel and get over it. Yeah. Um, but it does help Marianne forget how sad she was about leaving Norland. Yes. Mm -hmm. Eleanor is a bit bored. Mrs. Jennings repeats herself and rarely has anything new to say. Lady Middleton only talks about how awesome the evil children are. Brandon is okay, but he's moping over Marianne. Brandon asks Eleanor if Marianne objects to second marriages, despite the fact that she's the daughter of a second wife. Eleanor suggests Marianne will be more grown up and less romantic when she's experienced the world. And Brandon suggests that experiencing the world could be very detrimental for Marianne. It was for another lady that he knew long ago who experienced a series of unfortunate circumstances or events, mm -hmm. lemony thicket. <laughs> but then Brandon stops his retelling and changes the subject. Eleanor reflects that Marianne would have imagined the whole tale with a wild, disastrous ending. Mm -hmm. it, it totally, I never thought about it. It's, Brandon is totally lemony thicket. <laughs> or, or living he's like the main character in a lenny stick it book um yeah. i think marianne's romantic opinions probably have less of a foundation than we think because before she met willoughby she only knew it from books and right now they're just forming around willoughby and nothing else will do so they're just coming to her as you know as they fit this charming gentleman that helped her um up when she fell down yes in chapter 12, Marianne confides in Eleanor that Willoughby gave her a horse. And Eleanor's like, you can't just give a girl a horse. Gosh. Mm -hmm. Besides the fact that the gift is inappropriate, where would they keep it? How would they care for it? They're poor. But they only have three servants. <laughs> and none of them are horses. They're, none of them are stable boys or whatever they need to be. That horse can't help in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cannot make itself useful in the kitchen. By the way, Willoughby reveals that the horse's name is Queen Mab, which is the fairy queen who is like the Sandman. And he, the Sandman brings dreams to people as they sleep. Queen Mab in Romeo and Juliet brings dreams and nightmares to people as they sleep. Mm -hmm. Marianne refuses the horse, but Willoughby says, it's still your horse. I'll just hold on to it for you. I know. And she's so sad to tell him that, but Eleanor kind of is like, you can't keep a horse. So that was not Marianne's choice of, you know, that was Eleanor telling her you can't keep a horse. So yeah. I would usually disapprove of such an inappropriate uh, and practical gift, but we find out the horse's name. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> I like when we find out the names. 
<laughs> Elena realizes Willoughby is calling Marianne by her first name. <gasps> I know. Oh. Mm -hmm. Margaret confides in Eleanor that the two will be engaged soon as Marianne has given Willoughby a lock of her hair. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Now, of course, my husband's sitting right there, but should we give our husbands a lock of hair? See what, can, do you want a lock of my hair? Darby? But if he doesn't, oh, like, take it and kiss it and put it in a locket, I'm going to be very sad. Do you have a locket you to keep my hair? Sad. If I cut off my <laughs> hair, would you kiss it and then put it in a locket and hold it with you forever? No. No, yeah, I said I'll be very sad if he doesn't do that. And Eric goes, you're just, you can be sad now. Hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> what if you need my DNA? What if something happens to me and they they find and they need my DNA? Then you'd have to pull it from your head. So That's true. Curl your little curl yeah. Your see. Aww. Aww. Yeah. But I just I don't think he wants to like own it. Mrs. Jennings has been interrogating Margaret on Eleanor's crush. Marianne tells Margaret not to tell secrets, and Margaret replies, "It was you, Marianne, who told her the secret." <laughs> you told me at mrs jennings repeated request margaret reveals eleanor's crush has no job but his name starts with f mm -hmm. <laughs> the group then moves on to other topics and plans a picnic and a sale for the next day <laughs> i know now you and i did not have little sisters so margaret is actually kind of endearing to me because she's just trying to keep up with her big sisters but <laughs> however you and i also have a trillion children and um, our youngest are girls. And so this also reminds me that every road trip we've taken on, the youngest or the even the second, like I have a lot more girls than you do, they're they're going to spill the secrets of the um, the big sister. Yep. All yep. the secrets. Oh, all the secrets. Mm -hmm. In chapter 13, the picnic is suddenly canceled under mysterious circumstances. Everyone's getting ready to go when suddenly a letter is brought to Brandon. He freaks out and then suddenly leaves for London, giving no excuse to say it's an emergency. And Willoughby suggests that Brandon is faking and doesn't want to take the group to the planned location of the picnic. Brandon is very sus. Mm -hmm. Now, I usually want to live in the Regency era, but in this case, I'd be so mad. I can't, can I just not have a private emergency without everybody judging? You know, I just can't. I can't do that. So, and Willoughby goes even further with the faking thing that says that R Brandon wrote the letter himself to get out of the picnic. And of course, Marianne's like, oh, you're so right. You're so right, Willoughby. You're swooning and and you never said a, tr a truer word and, and more swooning. Mrs. Jennings spills that Brandon has an illegitimate child, Miss Williams, and that Brandon had likely gone to her. And again, does everyone have to know everything this is also giving uh lydia bennett and wicked vibes already there's something going on with this yeah instead of a picnic the group decides to go for carriage rides willoughby and marianne dash off ahead alone and come back much later mm. without revealing where they went and mrs jennings sneakily says she knows where they went <laughs> and willoughby has taken marianne to allenham court Mrs. Jennings suggests that it would be her future home. And Marianne admits this to Eleanor and defends her actions. Like, it's totally okay that he took me to his house alone by himself when no one was there. Eleanor thinks this is very inappropriate. After a brief argument, Marianne admits that it was too forward, but Willoughby really wanted to show it to her. It must make it okay. Yeah, because Marianne was already picking out the furniture. You know, <laughs> oh, I saw this room and it's going to look better when I when I design it. So scandalous. So you've got a lock of hair and Willoughby showing Marianne his record collection at his house. <laughs> yes, um, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. In chapter 14, Mrs. Jennings speculates on the whereabouts of Brandon. Eleanor continues to observe Marianne and Willoughby's lovey-dovey behavior. She suspects they're engaged. But she's not going to, like, invade her sister's privacy and be like, yo, you engaged? I know. But she's also wondering what's taking so long. So we've moved from it's too soon, like, like Elsa, Anna, you can't marry someone you just met. And then now it's, well, it's been two weeks. Like, tick, tick. Have we heard about an engagement yet? Maybe she's just tired of them being so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, come on. Like, it's got to come soon. Like, let's just put ourselves out of the misery. Willoughby is always visiting the cottage. When Mrs. Dashwood describes her hopes to remodel it, he strongly objects. 
It gives a big mushy speech about how the cottage is perfect. It has the one thing that can be found nowhere else in the world. And he makes Mrs. Dashwood promise, promise to leave the cottage herself and her family as it they are. Because they are all so loved mm-hmm. by him. No, I know. <laughs> now, I know they see this as endearing, but it's a bit much to tell someone else that they can't change their house. Like, it's it's too mushy and controlling like especially since we find out that at like alanum isn't exactly his house and he's not Mm -hmm. like that rich so all of a sudden you know what you you don't have a house don't tell me what to do with my house in chapter 15 it's the next day and mrs dashwood eleanor and margaret go visiting when they return they find marianne sobbing and willoughby very upset and he tells them he must immediately leave for london mrs smith the mistress of Allen M. Court has sent him on business. He will not return for a year. Mrs. Dashwood suggests he might be invited to the cottage, but he refuses. He tries to respond, but he, he cannot kind of come up with a reply, and he bails really quickly. Mrs. Dashwood joins Marianne in a state of distress. And Eleanor is like, mm, this dude, Willoughby, mm-hmm. he's really shady. Mrs. Dashwood thinks Mrs. Smith controls Willoughby and disapproves of Marianne, you know, because they went to the house alone to check out huh? records. Yeah, so all so the, you can't, yeah. like, who's who is this? Yeah. No one can figure out if they really are engaged. And again, nobody will ask anyone, but Mrs. Dashwood thinks they are engaged. Eleanor thinks he was very, very cold to Marianne uh, and leaving so suddenly, and Marianne continues to be very upset. And that's it. That's That's our recap. So let's move on to the exemplary vegetable of the chapter. I'm going to pick, huh, you know, it's this is a tough situation because um, I'm I'm tempted to always pick Eleanor because she's the only person with like her head on straight, but I'm trying to keep it, you know, mm-hmm. very. So I, I'm going to go with Marianne because uh, she's not my favorite character, but she's keeping it hot and heavy with Willoughby. And, you know, like that's that that action is interesting to me, I guess, because, uh, like you know, he's kind of hot, too. Um, right until he bails on her. And then I was like, Ugh. yeah, meh. I am not keeping it uh, fresh and I'm just going to pick the same person each week. Um, and I just realized that I picked the same person last week. Uh, yeah, I picked Colonel Brandon again, <laughs> but he's got responsibilities, you know, and he, but he also feels bad. He knows he ruined the picnic, but he, he can't help it, you know, and he's like, forgive me. I'm so sorry. And he also doesn't need to cave. He doesn't, it's none of anyone's business. He doesn't have to tell them what he's doing. So I, I like that too. He's like, it's, I, I'm not going to tell you just to win your approval. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The barely tolerable dance partner of our chapter. This is our least valuable player. Um, Again, I was struggling. I, I went with Willoughby. Um, He ditches Marianne so suddenly with some lame excuses. Um, I also really wanted to pick Brandon because he ruined a perfectly good picnic. And I was like, you know, dude, what's up? I know he did. He did ruin the picnic. Yeah. We should, we, um, whoever, um, I mean, I know, I know the situation, but um, the, uh, the cause of that, and we'll get to, we'll get to why he ruined the picnic. We should put, make that person, the person that, that did that, our, our uh, barely taller world dance partner. Yeah. So yeah. we should, but instead I chose Mrs. Jennings. So um, <laughs> like nobody is safe from her meddling. Uh, Willoughby was my runner up. I think his feelings toward Marianne are very real, but he's, he's broke. So he's got a bail. Yes. Yes. Our next section is uh, Lydia's ribbon rating. And we're going to rate this chapter chunk out of not, uh, 10 ribbons. And I said it was worth nine ribbons. I'm very curious about what Marianne and Willoughby were doing alone Mm -hmm. in his room. I know. Record player? In the huge mansion. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. I'm going to pick a nine as well. It's action packed with picnics and emergencies and scandals and unchaperoned outings and a horse named Queen Mab. (laughs) Everything I would want. Yes. Our next section is first impressions, where we give a working title to the chapter chunk. And I would name this chunk after delight, because that's Mm -hmm. what I think was going on with Marion and Willoughby in the big house. I know, but you got to sing it like like they do in um, Anchorman. (laughs) Skyrockets in flight. (laughs) 
Afternoon. <laughs> I named this chunk Willow B, my first love. <laughs> uh, our next section should be I thought I might read to you from Fordyce's sermons <laughs> with no prosody. But I didn't find any good quotes in this chunk of chapters. Yeah. I was looking for some, but it was all, it was, co- you know, just conversation. I didn't really, mm-hmm. I didn't really Nobody see. had any zingers. Our next section is a very accomplished woman where we share Jane Austen facts, notable historical details, and Regency vocabulary. My sources here were the British Library, a section called Discovering Literature, Romances, and Victorians, and Jane Austen's World. And um, so it should be noted that Jane Austen's novels revolve around a society that has explicit rules that govern the character's behavior. The plot of the stories is largely driven by gossip and the characters observing the behaviors of other characters. Letters also serve as a plot device and they too are governed by the rules of etiquette. Women were presented with conduct books to teach the rules of society and the focus of the conduct books was virtue women should attempt to attain perfection but should settle for being virtuous which means like you know keeping your legs crossed and don't talk to boys and don't Mm -hmm. be alone with boys and act like a lady Mm -hmm. so um the books would cover topics like religion housekeeping social etiquette but they would also suggest women study practical topics and broaden their minds, like, you know, study science or math, but don't, don't hurt your tiny brain too much. Like, don't stress it out. Only if you want to, and only if it's not going to hurt you. So women who would stay home and raise the children were meant to be the balance on into the opposite of the dirty real world that their hardworking husbands were involved in. They were supposed to balance that out with their softer, more genteel side. So for a woman to be forward or flirty would be showing too much of a sexual appetite. And that would show her to be too much of the dirty real world. So women were not supposed to want marriage to give them sexual relief. They were supposed to want marriage so that they could become mothers. Mm -hmm. So like Lady Middleton, like literally like memorized the conduct book. And she was like the picture of what a woman should be. Whereas obviously Marianne is like this brazen hussy who's like, I'm in love. I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to show it. I'm going to go alone with a man. I'm going to ride in his fast carriage. I have the wind in my hair. I want like his hands on me. I'm going to give him my hair. I'm going to like recite Mm -hmm. poetry to him. She's like embracing like the... The, what she's romanticizing as the real world but mm-hmm. like you know it's it's pretty easy yeah and she doesn't care who knows it either she doesn't right. care you know right so she's breaking basically every rule of society in that time period correct strangely enough there was no vocabulary word we haven't covered before here either yeah nothing stuck out for me yep i'm sorry we have a brief week Yes, we have a brief 10 minute movie section. So here's our section called I should have been a great proficient or everyone behaved naturally, where we watched about 10 minutes of the uh, 1995 film. Mm -hmm. So take it away, Rachel. That's right. So we we start when Willoughby and Marianne are racing down the lane. And this is it kind of overlaps a little bit from last week, but the conversation between Colonel Brannon and Eleanor about how, and they're talking about Marianne, how um she's completely unspoiled and Mary or Eleanor's like, as soon as she grows up, it'll be great. Um, but anyway, I, I always kind of halfway wish that um colonel brandon and eleanor would get together here because they they're so similar with their mannerisms you know their personalities they're both very calm like just suited for each other but in the book i don't see it at all but Mm -hmm. i I guess that just shows how good of actors they are so yeah but you've got the beginning of colonel brandon's picnic and sir john is so excited (laughs) about helping margaret fly her kite because and he's he just is yelling it he's like brandon's yard is perfect for kite launching let's go get your tail marianne you know the, let's go and and he she's trying to keep up with him and he's got the kite and he's going and it's so cute so and then we have 
uh, Charlotte, Mrs. Jennings' daughter, is played by Imelda Staunton. And then, oh my God, it's Umbridge. Mm -hmm. And I totally did not see Charlotte played by Imelda Staunton in my head. But like Umbridge with the giggles for the win. I know. I love I love Imelda, Imelda Staunton. She's so good. And she's the sixth Harry Potter actor. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. so then um the colonel brandon gets the message and he must leave immediately and that letter guy is really aggressive he's just yes. like where is he and he's pushing people out of the way so he, he, you know he's emergency like, yeah get out of the way and then and then he just stands there and i'm just like can somebody make him a sandwich or something anyway he, that was a lot of work for him but and then um willoughby's speech you they kind of go uh, they don't go on carriage rides again. Um, instead, they just go home. And Willoughby is now at Barton Cottage in the front with the we with the reeds and everything with the Dashwood women. And uh, Willoughby's speech about that um, the cottage is a lot less creepy about changing things. Mm -hmm. So I can see in this one how they like him. You know, he's not he's not like Wickham where you're like this guy. There's something about him. There is with Willoughby, but it's not that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and of course, then you realize he's not talking about changing the cottage. He's talking about changing Marianne. He's, you know, every time he's, he wants to profess his love to Marianne, but he can't. So he's going to talk about the cottage. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And then um, he walks or she walks him to his uh, curricle and um, wants to have a private moment with her tomorrow. And she's like, I shall stay home from church. I'm like, you get to skip church. <laughs> Like it hang out with Will like the you, alone in the house again, you breathing hussy. I know, like <laughs> uh that never would have happened in in, in my family. You know, yeah. no, you will not. Um and then during church, Margaret is like plotting their wedding. It's, it's so funny. It Margaret is so funny during church because she's like, he's gonna kneel down. They always do, and then you get a lot of shh, but they're you know, they're they're kind of excited too. So Yep. And we come home and find out that Willoughby's leaving, Marianne's crushed, Marianne's crushed, then mom is crushed, then, yep, it's then a disaster. Margaret is crushed, mm -hmm. everybody's sad, everybody's crying. Yep. And and uh, they, they first tell Margaret how Betsy makes some tea. And so, of course, then she's sent off and she can't, you know, she can't keep up. Wait for me. And um you know, M Margaret, run, or sorry, Marianne runs to her bedroom. She's crying. Um, Eleanor is arguing with her mother because, you know, Eleanor's like, uh, there's something wrong with Willoughby. And, you know, the mother's like, no, he's perfect. Something else must have happened. So she's crying. And then Margaret's crying because nobody wants the tea. She made this tea. And so <laughs> there's this really funny scene where they're in this foyer and the three bedrooms, the doors are slamming and uh, the women are crying behind and there's Eleanor standing there with the tea. And literally, like I said to myself, you should drink the tea yourself, Eleanor. I know, I know. And, and then she sits down and drinks the tea. I know she does because <laughs> she's like, what did I do? Like, <laughs> what I, I didn't do it, you know? And then uh, she's like, well, yeah, this tea's getting cold. So I'm just going to drink it. Can't let it go to waste. Yep. <laughs> Oh, so next week, we're going to read chapters 16 through 20 and watch nothing, nothing nope. in the movie. Nope. nope. You can, so. you can join our TikToks. You can, you can go binge on our uh, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. Yeah. Instead of watching yeah. the movie. We'll post some things. You'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Rachel, you have any advice for this episode? I do. I have, don't tell Mrs. Jennings anything. I think my advice is if you think someone's engaged, just go ask them. Yeah, it's okay. You can it's ask. It's fine. Just yeah. ask. I know. Just ask. Yeah. All right. Well, don't forget to leave us a review. That helps us stay established. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Hope Fry. And we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Jane, Elizabeth, Mary, Kitty, Lydia, what? Are exemplary vegetables not kale or cauliflower, carrots, lettuce, or broccoli? It's boiled potatoes for you and me. <laughs> this is professional singing. <laughs>